The Yellowstone Volcano is a supervolcano within Yellowstone National Park in the western region of the United States. The supervolcano, which lies northwest of Wyoming, measures 70 kilometers by 45 kilometers and rises to a towering height of 9,203 feet. The Yellowstone supervolcano is among the largest in the world and has erupted multiple times over the course of the last 2.1 million years. For decades, the Yellowstone supervolcano has been under the surveillance of scientists who have observed the site diligently and provided periodical reports on the state of this danger zone. The Yellowstone caldera erupts to a magnitude of 8, enough to eradicate life unfortunate enough to be within range, and this includes a distance as far as neighboring states. Such capacity for destruction has made Yellowstone the object of much scientific attention. In fact, the U.S. government instituted an official body, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, whose task is to monitor events at the site and provide reports on their findings. Now, after all these decades of dormancy, a finding of great significance has been reported. The presence of helium-4 gas, believed to have been trapped for billions of years beneath the volcanic surface. And scientists say its detection might signal another looming eruption. The ejection of gases at Yellowstone National Park is no rare phenomenon. Hot springs in the park often discharge gases like argon, neon, carbon dioxide, methane and steam. The ejection of helium is of particular significance because it is infrequent compared to other gases. Also, helium, when ejected, usually bursts out of volcanic rock which are responsible for the hydrothermal activity. The helium discharged in Yellowstone does not appear to be emitted from this common source, making its presence even more portentous. The research conducted by the United States Geological Survey USGS, suggests that the helium at Yellowstone emanates from the deep recesses of rocks, where it has rested for hundreds of millions of years. Nevertheless, the rarity of helium in Yellowstone contrasts with its abundance in the universe, for it is the second most abundant gas in the universe. The majority of this universal reserve comes in form of helium-4, two protons and two neutrons, while helium-3, two protons and one neutron, is much less available in the air. Helium-3 and helium-4 are the two isotopes, or isotopic forms, of helium. Scientists under the aegis of the United States Geological Survey have been gathering gas samples from the Yellowstone region for as long as a decade now. An analysis of these gaseous samples has revealed more than normal amounts of the helium-4 gas. The helium-4 gas discovered at Yellowstone, scientists say, is likely to have been building up under very ancient rocks that have been buried in the region for as long as 100 million years, or even billions of years. The two known sources of helium are radioactive decay of heavy elements like uranium or thorium in the Earth's crust and magma, a fiery molten liquid in the Earth's mantle. Helium-3 is produced from magma in the mantle, while helium-4 is produced from radioactive decay in the crust. Therefore, upon analysis of a helium sample from any source, for example, soil, water, etc., the source of the helium cannot be determined without knowing which isotope of helium predominates. A high presence of helium-3 indicates that the helium is mainly from the mantle, while the higher presence of helium-4 indicates the helium is majorly from the crust. The ratio of helium-3 to helium-4 is usually expressed as Ra, air ratio, which is the ratio of helium-3 to helium-4 in atmospheric air. The atmospheric Ra is about 0.00001384 Ra. The ratio of helium-3 to helium-4 is approximately 1 to a million, which means there are about a million helium-4 atoms to every one helium-3 atom in the air. Typical RA for a mantle source sample would be about 16 RA due to its greater predominance of helium-3, while a crustal source sample would be about 1 to 3 RA, higher helium-4. Two recent studies were undertaken to study helium emissions in volcanic areas. The first one, by Pedron et al., studied the event that led up to the October 12, 2011 eruption that rocked El Hierro in the Canary Islands. The scientists measured the relationship between helium emissions from the soil across the island 
and helium-3 and 4 in water from a well on the island. The findings showed that as eruptions increased during late summer to early fall, the same was true for the amount of helium emitted from the soil. The daily helium emission rose from about 9 kilograms per day to about 24 kilograms per day just before the eruption occurred. Also, the helium RA also increased from a 2 to 3 RA to about 8 RA. The scientists suggest that as the helium-3 from the magma, high RA, rises towards the crust, rising levels of helium-3 and helium-4 in connection with seismicity were also studied in Mammoth Mountain at Long Valley in California. The conclusion here was that mobile magma deep in the crust is responsible for the earthquake swamps. The ratio of helium-3 to helium-4 in the heart of the Yellowstone caldera is as high as 10 to 17 RA which is evidence of high magmatic activity underneath. However, the amount of helium-4 being produced at Yellowstone was also calculated and found to be about 600 times greater than what should be expected based on the rate of uranium and thorium decay occurring beneath the crust. This means that the helium-4 content far exceeds what the uranium-thorium decay should be yielding. The inference from the success of helium discovery is that the helium is likely that which has been stored in crustal rocks dating to millions and billions of years ago. The levels of helium itself are not a very dependable guide in assessing the potential seismicity of an area. It is the ratio of helium-3 to helium-4 that most accurately depicts the volcanic tendency of a region. This means that samples of the soil must be gathered and taken to laboratories for testing and subsequent calculations. Because of this necessity, quick RA values are not readily obtained from samples. Unsurprisingly, the residents of Yellowstone are unsettled by these reports' implications. These fears are justified because scientists have reported on the helium abundance in Yellowstone and stated that the Yellowstone supervolcano holds more liquid molten rock than they had previously estimated. The amount of liquid molten rock is a significant pointer towards an area's eruption potential, and scientists have found that these are in copious supply under the Yellowstone supervolcano. Magma is composed of liquefied rocks and crystals with different levels of solidity. The more liquid the magma constitutes, the more likely is the eruption. Two vast reservoirs filled with magma, molten, melted rock, occur beneath the Yellowstone caldera. One is about 3 to 10 miles under the surface, while the other is about 12 to 30 miles below ground. Carrie Cooper, a scientist at the University of California, uninvolved in the Yellowstone studies, believes that although these findings do not gladden us with news of reduced risk, they still reflect a big improvement on our ability to understand what's below Yellowstone. So instead, to appreciate the fact that we now grasp the prodigious magma that already exists. Michael Poland, also personally uninvolved, a research geophysicist and scientist in charge of the United States Geological Survey Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, has this to say, it's a little bit like getting a new lens on an old camera. Seismic waves originating from a quake pass through layers of earth before reaching a seismometer, a device that measures the intensity of a wave on the surface Upon reaching a layer of molten rock, the wave decreases in speed. Scientists use the time taken for a seismic wave to travel to the surface in estimating the amount of molten magma beneath, using the general principle that the more the magma, the more the obstruction, and therefore a wave that takes long to arrive suggests greater magmatic content, and vice versa for a quickly arriving wave. Previous seismic analysis held that waves travel linearly from the point of origin to the seismometer. Recent supercomputers have shown a more complicated course of seismic travel. Using these computers, scientists can now see a three-dimensional model of the waves. Using this 3D model, researchers at Yellowstone could visualize the crystal mush nestled between Yellowstone. Ross McGuire, a seismologist at the university, this crystal mush detected at Yellowstone defines a lot of events that at the moment 
all we can do is wait for more information from our scientists and researchers about these factors that can cause the Yellowstone supervolcano's massive eruption. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stuff.